One of my absolute favorite Goodwills in town to go thrifting at, the round front Goodwill. It's like Camelot. It's like we're going to Camelot. <laughs> we come here as often as we can. If we're on the side of town, we're definitely coming to this Goodwill. So stick around. Let's see, what do we have? Ooh, this is cute. A little mason jar measuring cup set, five bucks. Kind of cute. Think about that. I like this dish a lot, but not for seven fifty. Let's see. Oh, those are cute. I don't know why you need a little uh, bucket set like that, but it's real cute. This Goodwill always has one of the largest media sections. It's always a little bit overwhelming to look through it. So I always check the games first. Goody. Bro. Okay, we're gonna have to look at some of these, but we'll keep looking here in a second. But I just wanna show you all of this books. Okay, it doesn't look that ridiculous, but it is. There's a lot of Goodwills in town, particularly the ones closest to our house that are like two of these, one of those, and that's it. This is like five or six times that. Okay, Goosebumps. There's probably some tucked in there somewhere, but this is almost overwhelming. Hold on, what? Let's go. A dollar? What? Hold on. Well, this is going swimmingly. Dollar each Star Wars books we'll take. They have a pug mug. It's so cute. Kind of love it. How much is it? Dollar forty-nine. Mm, let's get that and put it in the booth. I've been on a mug obsession lately. I guess I'm just um, just got mugs on the brain. Mugs with pugs. Oh yes. Yes, please. I need all these I can get. <laughs> what? You're not a Furby, you just want to be. Something I haven't tried a ton of in my booth, but I have sold one of are these enamel strainers. Got these pretty designs on them. They're just kind of a little extra flair, you know? Rather than just your regular, you know, I guess plastic or ikea strainer that you can get just for for function it's supposed to have style in your pasta right but anyway it's only two dollars so i'm gonna try it in my booth again i absolutely love les mis which makes me want to buy that but i don't have any more room for posters favorite musical though for sure wow this is a funky piece it's got elephants on the handle I mean, six forty nine. I'm not getting it, but I get it. Like, totally understand why that's six forty nine. That's super cool. That might have to get bought, though. I've never tried Harley Davidson mugs, but I feel like there is a mug enthusiast that likes anything, and that is cool enough to try. One of the things that makes this particular Goodwill so good is they are just very, very, very good about restocking regularly. Classic. Classic. So I like coming here and making sure that I've seen all the toys a couple times a week at least. I think you're a knockoff, little pony. I think you're a little knockoff. Ooh, that is awesome. Tell me that doesn't need to go on our yellow shelves. Probably not gonna. That's like spray painted badly, but. I say all that to say I like this store. Doesn't look like I got here at the right time today to get the full force of the restock, but I'm leaving with some books. What'd you find? A strainer and two mugs, because uh, I can't help myself. That is not a strainer, that is a hat. <laughs> Phrase the flying spaghetti monster. Okay. This is one of Hannah's and mine's favorite movies. I uh, highly recommend it. I'd buy it if it were on Blu-ray, but it's not. Heck yeah. Yay! Did you like what you got? Yeah, it was good. I don't even know what I got. It was all nonsense, but it was all cheap. I got some sort of Mario thing. It was a dollar. I didn't even open it up. I saw a dollar and my brain just said bye. bye. It's not our intent, per se, to make Targets and Walmarts any large part of this channel. But you might have noticed that we have been to a lot of them recently. Uh, we're just, we have a second channel where we're doing trading card board game type stuff and 
because of the pandemic and everything, because of Corona and the craziness of it, it's been a little bit difficult to source Pokemon cards and Yu-Gi-Oh cards and some of this stuff. And not even that, just sometimes Amazon doesn't have deck boxes and card page sleeves just because there's a shortage of some of these things. So I've had to resolve to stopping at every other Target and Walmart in town just to see if they have any of that stuff in stock because I can't get my hands in on enough of it. No matter what website I go to, there always seems to be a problem getting it. So we are going to a Target today to try to find some very specific things regarding that. So yeah, once everything's kind of back to normal, the likelihood that we still do this on camera probably will go down. I've just been doing it on camera recently because I have to go to so many targets and Walmarts to find what I need. Even then it's hard, because look at how decimated some of this is. They've got some pages. We drove a pretty long ways today to go to this Desert Industries. This is my favorite thrift store in all of Phoenix. It's my favorite one. It's my favorite chain. Desert's my favorite chain, but then this is my favorite location of the deserts. But we drove really far to come here today because what keeps happening is on half off Monday, we come up to the Sabres up here and it's the only time we're anywhere near this Desert Industries. But because of COVID and all, they changed their hours to where they're not even open on Mondays. So we're never up here when they're open. So we drove here today just to go here. So fingers crossed it's worth it. Oh, cool. They have the Lord of the Rings goblets here. Probably expensive since they're in that lockbox, so we're just gonna leave them there. It's cool to see them. Yes. Something I really like about Desert is that they have just like a mass pile of Barbies and such. So it's just kind of a little bit of a hunt to see if maybe there's the odd Brad spell in here. I have found them here before. So hopefully in this pile of plastic, we can find something. Some Monster High doll. Or is that oh, My Little Pony doll. She looks very Rainbow Dash. Um, I don't have high hopes, but hey. Just a pile of plastic butts. <laughs> it's always just, it's always just comedy hour looking through this. Oh, hey. Ooh, she is not in good shape. Her head is just very loose. She is very dirty, but that's okay. She's probably also not priced. A dollar. It's in her hair. Sweet. We'll take her. Mini. Awesome sauce. That's rough. <laughs> that was probably really creepy. <laughs> Haven't found any good ones in a while. I like the wooden ones, the big, the big ones, not necessarily small ones. So we get those. Desert's always a good place to stock up for my booth because they do price things pretty reasonably. This is really cute. It's only two dollars. I mean, it's definitely not expensive by any means, but like I think put in the booth for ten bucks, somebody might be happy about that. Maybe do eight. I'm still making money on it. Here's a piece of Tupperware I've never seen before, but I think it's really cool. This double measuring cup. I guess so that you can do dry and wet in the same recipe. That's really smart. I like this a lot. You can tell it's Tupperware right on the... Oh, you're probably not gonna be able to see it, but it says Tupperware on the handle. So we're gonna get that. It's 50 cents. Super happy. Desert is definitely the thrift store that just keeps on giving. Here is a prime example of a little coffee jar, only one dollar. I'm gonna splurge a little bit on some Levi's because I found white ones! These are so difficult to find. But they're seven dollars, so I guess I'm gonna go ahead and get them, bite the bullet. There's a little stain on the back. I'm gonna have to work on that. Um, very tempted to get this pair, but they are a little small. These are already 29s and that's super small. 
um, for what I need. I need big sizes so I can cut them down to small sizes. And so I have a lot of seam allowance left over so they can get adjusted later if they need to, but I can always just make them as you know big as I can and then just move on. I was really hoping there would be a plethora of options, but there's not. It's just really just this one and this one, and that's it. So, but it's a start. It's totally fine. We did not get a ton, but what we did get was worth it because this place is always so cheap. So a dollar a piece on these, and you got some pretty cheap jeans, and I don't know what that is. Is it like a vase? It's a decorative vase. It's a bucket. <laughs> <laughs> this Goodwill is right down the road from that desert that we just came from. And because of where it's at, it also gets neglected because we're only up here for savers. So we usually haul right past this one on our way to savers. So let's give it the time and uh, attention that it deserves today. Yeah. I've had some of my best trading card game hauls from this one. You remember those big bags of cards I bought here? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, this is interesting. It's an enamelware pot the spice of life pattern on it but that is not the same pattern and this is definitely not going to be a corningware pan is it i'll never know there's no saragon there's there's no label so but i don't think it is i know that a lot of dish companies would make things that are kind of similar to it they weren't actually corningware brand so um I've seen a couple things like that before. I like this Goodwill so much because it has usually has the best bag toy wall. That's usually all bag toys all the way and it's gone. That's a bummer. That's where all those trading cards were that I was talking about. Rip. They've had to upgrade their glass baking section because it used to be just right here and now that's all cookware stuff and now the bakeware is over here which makes me happy it means there's more of a selection and it's easier to go through because it was always a little bit of a nightmare going through that little section so many little petite pans they want 349 a piece though that's too much i only can sell them for about five bucks that's really not that bad just no lid hmm Campbell soup thermos nice. These are kind of pretty. Not a lot of games here, but that is something I don't have in my Wii collection. Mold pets. It's there, but no manual. I think I'll just wait on that one. Interesting development. They have now put the Pyrex bowls in with like the crystal ware. Well, that means they definitely know it's special and they are going to upcharge. Yeah, this is Horrible condition. And it's still five dollars. This one too. It's just the flamingo pink, though. I think. Hmm. It's probably not worth it. Still, it's just in such bad condition. I've had problems selling things on eBay in bad condition, and people will be like, "This is worse than I than you said it was," and it's like, "No, it really isn't. It's just your interpretation." So, that's a shame. This is pretty crazy. Series of unfortunate events. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Missing 10, 11, 12. I walked by it and they were all out of order. I just put them in order, but I looked at it. I was like, that's gotta be really close to being complete. And it is. And the only way we've ever really successfully sold this set is complete. Um, it's two dollars, two twenty nine a copy. So kind of looking at 20 bucks ish, a little more than 20 bucks for the whole set here. And I think we have a copy of 10 at home. So. I don't remember how much the whole set sells for. Comment below if you remember this guy, but prepare yourself because this is bad. This is very bad. That's that's nightmarish is what that is. That's that's a big that's a big rip. Poor guy. Sorry, I'd probably have bought you if you weren't so messed up. We got nothing. There is no no bag toy wall. Gone. They put shoes there. That sucks. This is already a Goodwill that I always passed up unless I was just in no hurry at all. So I, I don't know if I'm going to come back anytime soon. Probably give it a little while. Come back and see if they were just planning on putting the toy wall somewhere else. But that's the only only thing I look forward to with this Goodwill is that toy wall and it's rip. We're going to do something we don't do a lot of. We're going to backtrack a little, but not from today's episode. We just did our half off Savers Monday that we 
do as often as we can. Some of our best episodes, honestly. But we were just here for that on a previous episode. But I found a bunch of World of Warcraft cards and she found a bunch of Brat dolls. And we both agreed that since we were up here, we should go back and just make sure we got all of it. Who knows? They might be restocking today because they just got wiped out from the sale day. And they might have put more of it out. So let's go see. I'm going to do something I don't normally do and beeline to the toys. I just... I don't have hopes that there's gonna be more, but if there is, I wanna know. All right, naked Barbie section. I feel like they would be right on top if they had restocked them. Oh, I got excited for a second, that was deceptive. Hmm. That's alright. Not disappointed because I didn't think that there would be anything anyway. So, totally fine. I'm glad we checked. Well, they've definitely restocked something because this stuff was not here. It was not here when we were. Let's put that over there. Let's put that over there. Ooh, I don't know if I have that or not. I'll have to look. Bunch of Sonic. I definitely have these Sonic games, but we're still gonna look at them. Man, I wish this stuff was here on half off day. It would have been a good day. I'd have pretty much bought most of this. Alright, let's see what we need out here. It may be nothing, but we're gonna see. Well, I found one brass thing, but it's not what I want. I don't really have any interest in collecting any of these, but I've seen these a ton. And arguably, I might have seen these more than I've seen the actual dolls. Ammo box. It's gonna be funny if I find a big stash more of the cards that I bought the other day and have to pay full price for them, but honestly, I'll be more than happy to. They weren't really expensive anyways. We were also here pretty early in the day whenever we found all that good stuff. There's a good chance there was more we missed. Maybe someone else went home with it, but we're gonna make sure. Just find some Polly Pockets. So. Seeing as we were just here and everything is back to being full price, Probably not gonna find anything in the dish section, but um, definitely have to check anyway because when when in the thrift store You have to look at your things. So Anchorman Cup still here and made it through half off Saturday half off Monday This is kind of cute, but that looks very Target Actually, I think I've seen it before and it's from Target so we're not gonna bother with that Hmm, not a ton of restocking happened over in this section. I've been trying to remember to check binders because I just need vintage and it doesn't necessarily have to be vintage, but vintage preferred binders with artwork on them for the things that we have trading cards of that we collect, like a vintage Power Rangers binder, a vintage Beyblade binder. It's going to be difficult to find them, but it's worth looking because even if I don't find those, sometimes I'll come across binders that have card pages in them that I need anyways. Who knows what's going to be tucked in here. Gosh, I wish these were here the other day at half off. These are beautiful. But $10 is a little too much for them. They're so 80s. Like imagine that with a denim cropped jacket and like a floral shirt and your hair like up in a high pony. It's 80s. Just found some things that I think we're going to have to get. Uh, or at least look at real quick. Jeez, there's... A lot of this would be worth getting if it were half off day, but it weren't here. This has since been restocked. But there are a couple things I am gonna get. I should probably spend some time looking some of this up. Hold on to that, that looks important. Ooh. Ooh, 10 bucks, see? Yeah, they put the good stuff all out after half off day. They do their heavy restocking. Pretty certain I've already got that one. Star Trek. Next generation companion. I'm gonna look some of this up, but I set aside what I'm definitely gonna get. Hot darn. I'm actually watching through this stuff right now. These are the scripts. So I, I, you guys may not know this about me, but I, um, I went to school for writing. Writing movies is kind of what I really do. It's one of my biggest passions. And so I read a lot of movie scripts. I probably read more movie scripts than I do books these days. So it's a really neat writing exercise to go back and watch something and read the script kind of while you thumb through the script while you watch it and see what's different. 
very pumped about that actually. And then these were there too. And like they're ripped open and stuff. But like they've got the posters and stuff in them. So I think we're just gonna get those because they're cheap and we'll examine them when we get home. Just kind of have a experience there. And then please be cheap, not cheap. Ugh. I don't like paying three dollars a piece because I get some of them and read them or put complete sets together and then I sell them but that's about all I sell them for so I don't think we're getting any of those I'm telling you I'm pumped about that script book tell him that's not something I would want it is something that he would want he prints them out himself I don't yeah I don't think I've ever showed you guys my script collection but I have a I have a script collection that's a that's definitely something I collect scripts well I really, 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 really liked that last minute find. She was actually getting in line to check out and I found most of this stuff. And I was like, wait, no, come back. Um, if I remember when we get home, I'll try to get my script collection out to show you guys. I, it's definitely something I'm pretty passionate about reading, collecting and reading and actually using. So very happy to find that. And then these are supposed to come with free gifts and extra stuff. And I'm assuming that stuff may not be in there, but I looked in there, the magazine looks to be in there. So we'll go home together and kind of see what we actually came away with it'll be like opening a christmas present you guys listen to this we're driving home hannah's almost crying are you crying i'm like short circuiting so what just happened was i'll have to explain this because i don't think she's gonna be able to um we're driving home we're done for the day and hannah just got a notification on her phone she almost made me crash because she <laughs> yelled out loud you just sold how much uh one person bought 511 dollars worth of items so if you don't know we make most of our living doing uh reselling clothes i'd say two-thirds of it is that and uh we'll just have to screenshot this uh we had to we had to take a second to make sure it was real because this seems pretty spammy right it did. um but one person bought five six hundred dollars worth of stuff how much was it $511. $511 worth of stuff on her Depop account. Now, this is not unheard of. We've heard, you know, people, we, I think one woman once bought $300 worth of dresses from you. Yeah. Stuff like that. Uh, but of course, you gotta go check your PayPal, make sure the money's there, make sure it's not got fraudulent, you know, activity going on. Uh, but I do wanna say, like, it's, I'm not, you're surprised, I know. <laughs> But I'm actually not, and I wanted to share this with you guys, and maybe she'll understand too, maybe she won't, but she's been putting hours and hours into making custom items to go on her Depop. So many hours. So, so, many, so many extra hours, and but that's important to understand because something I've grown to learn about the algorithm of, this counts for eBay too. The more time you put into the app posting, the more you get a bump from the algorithm. This is important to understand about reselling, especially on online apps. If, it, it, part of it's just basic common sense, right? If you put more work into it, you're gonna get more out of it. That's, that's, that's obvious. And so I think it can be easy to interpret what I'm saying is that. And that is true, and that is good advice. Anybody that ever gives you that advice, take it. But I'm telling you, these the algorithms of these apps, you like, comment below if you've ever seen this on eBay. You post 100 items today, none of them sell, 20 items from last week sell. There's something about eBay's algorithm that pushes things this way. Depop, we have learned over and over and over, if she spends a bunch of time this week posting new things on Depop, all her other stuff will get more attention, the algorithm will push it more. And this gets really hard and difficult to understand because there is a there's a computer programmer somewhere programming a way in which an app with millions of users selling and buying can sustain itself because it would be very easy for people selling to never surface and never have any success because they're buried by other millions of people selling so there's a lot of utility in learning how to hack those systems and observe those algorithms and learn how to do what you need to do um, so I don't know how to give you advice on how to figure out those algorithms, but if you're a Depop seller, if you're an eBay seller, all I can tell you is you should pay attention to what behaviors you put into those apps and what comes out the other end. Because there's going to be things you can do to increase your sales, and I'm just, well, basically what I'm saying happened with Hannah and all that money she just made, there's a certain way in which if you pay attention to your Depop app, you're going to get some money. 
You know, you're gonna, you're gonna, it's gonna, you're gonna do well inside of the app with its algorithm. We use this word algorithm kind of like a magical, it's the uh, Wizard of Oz behind the curtain sometime, but it really is, you know, you, we've even had experiences where if you just spend time on the app, it's kind of bad, but you know, you refresh all your items, drop a couple prices, all of a sudden the app goes, oh, they're doing work, let's push their other items. You're crying, aren't My you? My emotions are catching up with me now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I'm not crying or nothing. I don't, I'm not feeling emotional about it because I'm almost feeling super analytical about it. Like, if you remove the emotion from it, you just made all that money. You did that well this week because you put the time in. You can, if you want to, you can boil it down to that. Do hard work. You're going to get the money. But I challenge you to go further because that is true. That is real. But take it further. Learn your app that you resell on. Learn how to tickle the underbelly of that algorithm <laughs> and pull from it fruits. I know that was the dumbest was thing I've really, ever said. Really that was really weird. Forget I said it, but seriously, learn the app that you're selling on. It worked for her. It could work for you. I worked really hard. <laughs> <laughs> you're ready to take a break? You want to take a vacation on that 600 bucks? <laughs> no, I need to make another. <laughs> All right. We bought some interesting stuff today. I think I bought one thing in particular that kind of sparks another conversation that I'm really interested to talk about. A little bit out of the norm for this channel, but I think it would be cool to show off something. You bought some interesting stuff today. Go ahead and jump into what you got. I did. I bought a lot for the booth. So I've got a dish booth and a lot of this stuff will definitely fit right in there. So I got this little coffee jar thing I thought was really cute. It's like a milk glass. So that'll sell well at our antique mall for sure. I think so. I wish there was more to this set because typically, you know, there's a, a tea and then also the sugar and flour, but that's okay. People like coffee and have specific coffee stations. So I think it'll do well. Harley Davidson mug. That's nice. Pretty sweet. I particularly am not a Harley person, but I know a lot of people are. So that'll be a good one. <laughs> this is more me. <laughs> it's a pug with glasses. I like it a lot. Here's your bucket. My bucket. This has got a number one on it. It does. That's I the number one why. bucket. It's great. Sure. That's the best bucket. Some long stemmed ferns or something will go in that and look good. So this might be my favorite dish I found today. That is miraculous. Isn't it so clever? Like You're, you're keeping that, right? Oh, should I? I think so. It, it seems super useful. It does. I mean, when you're making a recipe and you need a cup of wet and a cup of dry, this is perfect. Like dry and then the pour spout for the wet. Like this is brilliant. Tupperware is amazing. For sure. Um, And then I got a couple of jeans that I'm going to cut apart and sew to other washed Levi's. So you can make another big sale like the one you just made. Yes. So those color block jeans that you saw in that sale are from these kinds of creations, so when I'm very excited. You say the words color block a lot. It's kind of like when sometimes we make several episodes in a row where we say our dish booth, our toy booth, without actually going to them. Yeah. And sometimes you say color block jeans a few episodes in a row without actually showing any. And so I think new people drop by the channel and get uh, confused sometimes. So if you're watching and you're new, Hannah cuts those in half and sews them together and sells a crap yeah. ton of them. So imagine this part of this jean on to this part okay we're confused but and then yeah it makes a whole new pair of jeans that's super cool and two-tone very cool all right now this is my favorite thing you got <laughs> spaghetti hat i got a strainer <laughs> and it's got flowers on it that's what more nice. do you need that's all you need for sure all right well i got a bunch of well you got one more thing hold on i did save the best for last my creepy brad stall that i got we're gonna end up having a brat stall right here i think uh next to the Zena shelf and we're working really hard to get all that together but we still have a few more things to accumulate i'm very excited about her because she is a hot diggity darn mess she needs a lot of fixes she needs a lot of work and that's exactly what i want whenever i find these dolls is someone some of them that need to be given some major tlc all so. right well my find of the day i'm just gonna get it out of the way so we can talk about it mcdonald's furby we're amassing them Obviously, these are the ones that I really, I don't really care for these guys, but I'm picking them up sometimes when I see them. But these guys, very happy to put those on the shelf. Super pumped about that. I hope I find more in the very near future. And uh, we're going to do some rearranging when we get to doing Hannah's Bratz shelf. This will all make a little bit more sense. So I'm just kind of, I'm just hoarding it until then. But I've got so much more to talk about today. You don't even know. These baskets, uh, 
it's kind of a mess down here because it's not in, it's not really organized very well but all those down there that's how i organize all my magazine collections in this big basket i can't get enough of these and i actually uh the antique malls that we resell at when i sell magazines and stickers and some other things there i use all these wooden ones um so that's just good for my toy booth uh there's so much here to talk about i bought a few books uh four star wars books and i'm kind of collecting some of these but we resell a ton in our toy booth but i I'm, I'm keeping a few of those um video game wise today i did pretty good i think all stuff for the collection monster trucks mayhem tomb raider Lara Croft legends mortal kombat let's go and a hot wheels game that i didn't have i thought i had them all but i was wrong so that was all nice, and uh, they were all pretty cheap, just a couple bucks a piece. Very happy about that. Mob Rule, gaming manual. I just never actually seen a gaming manual for this game, so I didn't leave it behind. Let's find out what this is real quick. Some sort of power-up card game. All right, well, cool. I didn't open it or nothing. It was so cheap, I was just like, bought. Oh, it's all sealed. Let's go. You know what? We might have to bust that open and play it once before we put it in our toy booth, you think? That'd be fun. That was a pretty cool find for a buck. Especially with being sealed, that's pretty sweet. Yeah, there's not really any room on my Mario shelf over here. <laughs> we'll just set it there. All of this needs some rearranging. We're working really hard. We do a, a yearly game room tour. Uh, a lot of channels do this. They'll post a game room tour on January the 1st. And I kind of make a... I found another game we bought. I didn't even notice it. I kind of make a really big deal out of it. And I make it a, a big goal yearly to get this room. The major the major upgrades I want to do, I want to get them done by January 1st. So there, there's some, like, some serious behind-the-scenes reorganization going on in this room that... Honestly, it's a lot of work, and it's going to take up until January 1st, but come January 1st, I should have a pretty good game room tour for you guys, and we really should have this room spinning like a top. So look forward to that. Subscribe for that. If you're not subscribed, you're going to want to be part of this for that 2021 No More Rona game room tour. Uh, okay, two more things that I bought. Uh, the same antique malls that we're talking about, I decorate them with these. As a matter of fact, you see this over here? Let me see the camera. <laughs> We're stacking them. I buy every one that I see, and you guys have actually sent me a couple of them. So I'm up to five spares. And that'll almost do one entire new toy booth, won't it? That's pretty cool. Okay, last thing that I bought. We're going to talk a little bit at length about these movie scripts. This is just a compilation of um, specific episodes of Star Trek Next Generation where this guy popped up. He's like God, but not God. It's really complicated. I'm not going to try to sit here and explain to you who Q is in Star Trek Next Generation. It'll blow your brain apart. Um, but yeah, all those episodes from that are in there. I'm currently actually going through and watching Next Generation now for the first time in its completion. I watched a lot of episodes when I was a kid, but uh, scripts are very, very important to me. And to prove that to you, let me show you this is most of my script collection, though not all of it. And we'll just kind of run through it and talk about certain parts and talk about what it is. Um, some of this is like interesting. Some of this stuff, these are, these are films, these, you'll kind of see the difference between me and some of the people that I've worked with. This is not a criticism of anyone. It's more of a, like an obsession for me. So I take this so serious. But these are movies I was hired for, just a few. And you'll see most of these that are just like stacks of paper, Usually when I get hired for a movie, they look like this. But whenever I write a movie and I hire people to shoot my movie with me, they end up looking like this. Bound text down the side. I make these myself. So this, this is all my notes scratched into this. This is a film I shot. Now, I'm not trying to advertise this, but if you're all interested in, in something like this, I do shoot films with friends and I have a completely separate channel that I've never advertised or tried to push so it doesn't have a lot of subs it just has the movies i've shot on it and it's just my name dallas lee blanton if you search that on youtube that channel will pop up and uh, it's also i think featured on the home page of this this channel but i i don't really i don't really push it a ton but uh, a lot of these are like there's another one i was hired for i'm trying to get to the good stuff here then there's lots of little short stuff i wrote for like plays in college I've kept everything. Here's a half-bound script. This is one of my favorite uh, Coen Brother films, A Serious Man. That one's not bound as well as some of these others you'll see here in a second. Here's the first film I ever wrote. It's terrible, because it was the first one I ever wrote. Uh, one of the first films of mine, second, it's the, this is the second film of mine we ever wrote and shot all the way through when we first moved to LA. They're just all falling over. 
Uh, here's the latest script that I wrote. Didn't do a very good binding job on this one because I was in a hurry and I wanted to get it mailed out to some people. Um, there Will Be Blood, great film. Uh, this is kind of what Hannah was talking about. I print them out and bind them myself. Manchester by the Sea. So these are all films that I like a lot. Like one of my favorite films by Christopher Nolan, The Prestige. My idea was always to have a nice library of these that look great on a shelf and I can go pick them up. You know, just purely for personal consumption. But it's kind of extra nice when they have their own artwork on them, right? And then of course, Star Wars scripts, same thing. Just as pretty as can be. It's very nice to be able to sit down with a complete script like this and read it. Instead of like, I, I've been hired to shoot 10 or, I don't know, eight or nine movies by this, almost 10 movies at this point. And every time I get a, a script in the mail, it's either this, because Staples will do this for you if you pay them. I don't even know what movie that is. That's a film I shot a long time ago. Um, or, you know, here's here's two more of mine. These are films I wrote and directed. And that's whenever I hire, whenever I cast people to do my movies and stuff, they get one of these in the mail. And I always feel like it's a nice extra touch. And uh, they also look really nice on a shelf. I'm trying to figure out how to stack these so they don't fall off the table again. Uh, lol, that's not a script. That is Jethro Tull flute music. For those of you who thought I was kidding about playing the flute. Uh, just trying to see if there's anything else. It looks like it says was was. Was was. It says Sam Sam. Uh, this is actually a film I shot and was very proud of. Uh, we just actually haven't released it yet. It's kind of done. The film kind of got messed up as independent films do, but it is kind of done. I just never wanted to release it, but I should because it's like the only, it's the closest I've ever come to like a suspense or horror movie. But I just wanted to show you that because one of these days when we have more room for this kind of thing, because this is so far past our normal interest. This is just like side interest or real passion interest and not like, you know, what, the things we do here in this game room are closer to, I don't want to say work because I'm not trying to diminish it, but the things we do here are more, a little bit more important than these like passions that I just kind of do and don't tell anybody about really. But you can imagine though, once I get all this right, all my script collection, and this isn't even all of it. This is actually just what I can find right now. I've got tubs with more of them uh, in our storage unit. But that's a pretty awesome find, I think. So if you ask me find of the day, that's definitely it. Uh, but that's enough about scripts. I just thought you guys might be interested in seeing some of that. Um, I don't know, I, If comment below. I know there's a few people out on the fringes that collect actual movie scripts, signed and et cetera, et cetera. I'd be really surprised to hear any of you go quite this far in print your own scripts, but maybe definitely comment below. Let me know if anybody has interests approaching this. I'd be glad to talk about it in the Discord or something today. Um, what else to talk about, Hannah? My, uh, I can talk about movie scripts for another hour. Exorcist doll? <laughs> I don't think anyone quite appreciates exactly what's happening here. <laughs> Do it a little slower. That's creepy. <laughs> That's funny. Um, well, guys, thanks for hanging out with us today. I hope you enjoyed this. Lord knows I did. I can't. I love days like today where we just we found a bunch to resell in our toy booths. We found some pretty cool stuff to keep. Uh, I'm pretty excited for you to get around to make it. We're working really hard on making a video. I can't make her head spin around. <laughs> you gotta get it started and then yeah. it'll work. <laughs> well, I wasn't trying to loop de loo it. I was trying to just get her to look at the camera, but like her head's very top heavy and she won't. We've got some pretty awesome uh, content coming up. Hannah's working, repairing these dolls and fixing their hair and stuff. So, so subscribe for that. Turn those notifications on so you can come back and hang out with us when we do that. Do check out the Discord. Like I mentioned, it's a community place where you can come chat with us. If you ever wanted to get a hat, hold of us, chat with us, direct message us, that's the place to do it. It's the easiest place to get a response from us uh, compared to Instagram, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, also, before you go, check out our merch store, tendostrash.com. You guys keep rocking that hashtag trash life hashtag hashtag on social media when you find stuff like this at the thrift if you saw anything in this video today that sparked your interest or you have a shared interest in make sure you post a picture of that on instagram and hashtag a trash life we're doing giveaways and stuff like that all the time we're showing off your finds semi-regularly here on the channel channel about once a week we do that so i appreciate it if you keep on doing it you've been doing you guys have been doing great every time before i go to bed at night i just go see the hashtag post on instagram and on, and on our discord uh, there's always a ton, and I really do appreciate it. It's one of my favorite parts of the day. Uh, other than that, do hit the subscribe button. We post daily videos here every single day. We haven't failed to post a video here on this channel for well over 300 days. We're quickly approaching 400 days. We might already be to 400 days in a row. I'd have to go count. I can't do the math on top of my head, but... Um, 
So if you have subscribed and those notifications are on, you will get a notification first thing tomorrow and you can come back and hang out with us then. And until then guys, peace out.